Hi there, it's Kim with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with the final Masters 25 full set release discussion. We're going to try to establish some of the archetypes, if there is any archetypes in this set. Uh, the set is, is, in my opinion, quite laughable as a draft format, uh, but we'll have to wait and see if that is the case. I might be proven wrong. There have been sets in the past that I have not liked, and they ended up drafting them, and then uh, they end up being a pretty good experience. So anyway, we'll try to discuss that. Before we do, I'd like to do some shameless self-promotion. With sponsorships dwindling, I lost two sponsorships over through November to January due to the uh, just the, the whole Magic Gathering culture. For me to remain an independent voice, um, it's obviously this is a huge sign from Wizards of the Coast as well as sponsors that if you have any opinions that are contrary to the mainstream magic culture, then you are not welcome as far as the advert uh, as far as far as getting advertisements and as far as getting sponsors and just get promoted that way. So for the channel to to really continue forward, we're gonna have to move into the online presence. Um, I've not been the, the greatest fan of selling online because of, of stores like Sports & More that just undercut you into oblivion. For all those who don't know, Sports & More is a distributor. It is. We've been, we've basically found out that they are a distributor and they're breaking all the WPN rules, but it seems like Wizards is not only not punishing them, but encouraging Mass Drop and Sports & More to continue to be uh, these like fire sale type outlets to get incredibly cheap products to uh, the to consumers. So, and then we also have kind of the ad apocalypse still happening on YouTube where the ads, especially Q1, uh, the ads are quite terrible. So the ad revenue falls down a ton. So there are two ways to support me. Basically come over to our store on roguedeckbuilder.com and purchase either a playmat or purchase these supplemental products like the Masters 25. We're trying to match eBay. Currently eBay is going for 180. So we are matching eBay and I'll, I'll keep messing around with the prices. But I, I highly appreciate uh, if you can come and check out a Masters 25 from our store. Uh, the other way is through either is is through formats like Patreon or just donating through PayPal. That can help keep us afloat. There are a lot of expenses uh, associated with with running a YouTube channel, as far as just building rogue decks, maintaining an empty Joe account, as well as paying for the the operation of the website and all the equipment you use. So again, I don't like to to do these type of videos, but uh, with losing the sponsorships over the, the course for the November through January, that really, really put a dent in it to my ability to run the channel. So anyway, uh, come over here, check out some Masters 25, or if you're not interested in that, we do have some sweet playmats uh, that you can purchase that will definitely go to help supporting the channel. We're going to get T-Search and other things pretty soon once we find the, the just the viability of doing so. So anyway, with that out of the way, with my long little ad there, we'll get to the, the Masters 25 spoiler. So let's just go to the newest spoilers. This is all going, the full set is now spoiled, 249 out of 249. I believe the... Um, I believe the set value is insanely low right now under Iconic Masters at the release of Iconic Masters. Uh, and I think last video I did start to compare the two and it even seems like Iconic Masters has more modern staples and commander staples than this set does. So right off the bat, it, again, we see there there's some a little bit of life gain strategy to this this deck, there's a little bit of loot strategy like Dauntless Cathar. Like white, blue, flicker does seem like it's sort of viable with cloud with the, the cloud shift, but they have like a, a halfway flicker, halfway heroic, but really nothing with heroic. You have like the, the fencing ace. Um, very, very disappointed from Theros. We didn't get heroic base cards. And again, it just seems all over the place. Uh, with me. So starting off, we have like Act of Heroism. It gets plus two, plus two, and block additional creature. It's actually one of the weaker ones of these cards um, from even this block, from even from the Amaket, uh Hour of Devastation, or if we even go into like Ixalan. Uh, this is actually not, <laughs> in my opinion, not one of the... It, it works with... The whole reason they had the Act of Heroism was for Exert. But if we didn't get any Exert cards, then this is just falls short. The Angelic Page, we could go some sort of like white weenie strategy, but again, this feels quite weak, uh, especially in Uncommon, you can't, you can't really rely on that. The Aramancer seems also weak too. There just doesn't seem a lot of enchantments either. The, again, with the milled base strategy plus the, the sacrificing, uh, there just isn't a lot. 
uh, can, I guess, protect against this disenchant that's coming out. Congregate, sure, the life gain is going to be a strategy that can sort of counter the burn. We did see some burn cards like Fall of Lightning and Lightning Bolt that are going to be a little bit of a pain to deal with if you don't have any sort of counter strategy. So that's why Congregate is in this type of thing. Again, Dauntless Cathar does have some pairings with like the Merfolk Looter to loot this in and then and get some value out of it. It's a decent card here. Uh, but again, look at this. It just doesn't seem, white doesn't seem to have a theme here whatsoever. A 3-1 flying for, so being defensive, being aggressive, uh, we have whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, it gets plus one, plus one. So that actually works with like the, the, the burial. Um, the zealot's kind of weird. Turn face stop all damage that would be dealt this turn is dealt to target creature. So we have this morph type uh, deck strategy, but I don't think we have any like payoffs for morph, like reducing the cost of morph. An insane miss with that. Uh, so here with tokens with the Kong being sleeping dragon, we can sort of go that route. Uh, another weird one with the knight, the, the skyward eye gets plus three plus three for four mana, uh, but you have to be in white green at that point. And the Loyal Sentry, when Loyal Sentry blocks a creature, destroy that creature and Loyal Sentry. This was, is this, I don't know if this was downshifted to, from Uncommon to Common. We'll have to wait and see. I can't remember. Or if this doesn't exist on MTG, on Magic Online or not as a common. Uh, there wasn't a lot of downships that I was too impressed with. Like the Fencing Ace is one of them. Fiend Hunter didn't get a downshift. Fencing Ace did. So it could allow for like soldiers or just this could go in the heroic strategy as it does have the double strike. Uh, so I don't know if Fencing Ace is better than like the, the Sky Guard. The thing is Fencing Ace is an all-in on one turn, whereas things like the Sky Guard you can build up over time. Um, the rest of these, though, I do believe have existed as commons, like the Dauntless Cathar is already a common, and all of these are already commons at the moment. Uh, we have the Lunark Mantle, which gives Enchanted Curious plus two plus two and sacrifice a permanent. This creature gains flying. Okay, so there we go. We have a little bit of a, a strategy I've identified with the Aromancer. So you can sacrifice a permanent. So that's where you're sacrificing the creature to then get the, the burial to get four one ones. And then you can, yeah. So I guess white will have some of those. So not as bad as, as. so the Kong Ming, the Lunark Mantle, these are going to be key cards. The, the burial. Uh, even Griffin Protector, it does have that, but it's going to be, to me, it's a little janky to get to, to do that. We have the Noble Templar, which is just filler beyond filler. I guess you could reanimate after you plane cycle it. And again, next Fleece Ram, which is counter counterintuitive with, with white being aggressive, but then also white being a life gain strategy. So the Ordeal of Heliod, which used to work good with plus one counters, especially heroic, uh, but we did not get those in the set. Uh, we have a Path to Peace, which is. <laughs> Very laughable, as it's a four mana destroy creature in a iconic set in a Masters Twenty Five. I mean, this is usually the removal should be on par with the threats, and this one just seems very out of place here. Squad Talks always always nice to have in a set. This was just reprinted in Eternal Masters though, but again, it does have some synergy with the the Kong Ming Sleeping Dragon Swords to Plowshare. Unfortunately, this card is still just barely starting to recover from its Eternal Masters reprinting. So there's not a lot of equity to be gained from the Swords to Plowshare. And the Herbers Protector is good in a flicker based strategy, but six mana makes this quite tough. It is a card you can reanimate a four for white angel. I don't think we had any sort of populate strategy with this though. Uh, so again, the best you can hope for is uh, either the flicker or reanimation uh, for this particular card. Uh, the, Val the Valor in Akros, again, will work with the go wide. Whenever a creature enters the battle under your control, creatures get plus one, plus one. So this will pair with like the Hordling Outburst. And then we do have White Main, Li White Main Lion also working in the flicker-based strategy to kind of flicker some of these cards that have some ETB effects. So White Red will have kind of a go wide strategy-ish, but I think weaker than ones in the past. Uh, rather the peasants I didn't see, or I didn't see a lot of ways besides this like Kong being sleeping dragon uh, to really get that to go. Uh, but then Flicker does seem to have some pretty decent uh, cards in here. So we have Arcane Denial, great in Commander. It's sees play every now and again in some popper mill strategies where you're, you know, it, this is basically mill two. You also draw a card, which then mills your opponent one and you get a counter a spell. So um, in the heavy Jace Erasure decks, I have seen some people play some Arcane Denials before. Barring a, a thousand er or 100,000 arrows, draw a card for each tap creature target opponent controls. Can't remember if this is downshift or not. I don't think it is. I think it already existed as a common. 
We have the choking tethers that can tap up to four creatures and then cycle it to tap a creature. So you can tap draw a card for two mana. Pretty decent card to pick up in multiples. I would like to have seen like a white blue tempo, but again, I don't see anything from white that can really get you to that aggro. This is either kind of go white or flicker, not really a, a tempo prowess type uh, strategy. We have an unblockable, two one unblockable, uh, the Court Hussar which works in the flicker based strategy sort of because if you flicker it, it then dies because uh, you had to uh, sacrifice it unless you spent a white to cast it. So if it flickers in, it enters the battlefield without a cast, I believe, and then dies. Uh, Curiosity did not get a downshift, still a, an uncommon. It's okay. I've, this card would have been better if we just didn't get like a, a cooler Curiosity that, um, I guess this one deals damage to an opponent. Does the one that came out of Rivals of Ixalan have to say combat damage? I think it does. So Curiosity, you know, can be paired with a pinger. Did we see any pingers though, is the case. And we also have the untap and untap. So we have this Curiosity Horseshoe Crab free from the real combo that usually likes to be put on like pingers. Or things that get a lot of of, of value from untapping. Um, uh, this is quite weak. And again, we have a lot of this pillow fort type strategy in white blue going on with the Dragon's Eye Savant plus the Nyx Fleece Ram. Uh, the Genju of the Falls uh, becomes a three two. An island becomes a three two spirit with flying, and then when it dies, you can return the Genju flies uh, falls back. Sure. Um, Murder of Crows is a decent value card. 4-4 four, for four, four, 5 mana, uncommon. Uh, it's, again, fine in a reanimation type strategy because you do get to, uh, get to loot when it dies, but still kind of a lackluster card for a, a master set. Mystic Hidden Way, again, it's a morph, sure, but we didn't see a lot of of, of morph payoffs, unfortunately. Phantasm, Phantasmal Bear, so we have sort of the aggressive type uh, strategy-ish, but nothing really to keep it going i guess like unblockable two ones and eh. nope i don't think it's gonna get there retraction helix sure um has some synergy with the freed from the real and horseshoe crab to then bounce a bunch of permanents in one turn i guess another island cycling uh we have a sift which again these type of cards the sift is actually one of the weaker ones for cards that do very similar things uh twisted image fine i Kind of wish this was downshifted because it would have made inside out combo a little bit stronger you wouldn't have to run inside out um but it is still an uncommon ancient cravings good for commander this is actually pretty decent for the set uh draw three cards lose three life this is a pretty good payoff as well for the uh life gain strategy for white black again blood hunter band uh bat can actually synergize with the ancient cravings and we have the dust legion zealot as well so we're, we're looking at this kind of tempo strategy with white black and then do we have the Cossack Tar, which is, oh, so meh, so meh for this, this set. Deadly Designs from the, put a plot counter on a, cre uh, on Deadly Designs, when there are five or more disrupted two target creatures. Takes a while to get going. Um, you have to spend, so five or more, you have to spend 10 mana to still, tr to destroy two creatures. And then you can get it back with the Aramancer, but again, there's just, I would allow, rather see like a Seal of Doom here. They had better synergy. Disfigure, uh, here I actually would like to see the negative 2, negative 2 um, enchantment that would go with the Aramancer over Disfigure. Uh, the Death Hut Head Buzzard will actually keep those um, token strategies in check. The Dust Legion Zealot has synergy here with the Fallen Angel and other cards. So Fallen Angel can actually go with like Hordling Outburst in red or it can go with the white. A lot of things that want to die and it, it tends to have a lot of its own cards. The Death has, uh, Head's Buzzard and the Fallen Angel do have a little bit of synergy as a way to kill it. I think we see another one of these coming up as well. The Horror, Horror of the Broken Lands with Cycling. Again, we didn't get a Cycling payoff. Mesmeric Fiend, sure. It's a, a decent little card here. Uh, Kite Sail Freebooter, I think, would have been a better place for this. And then grab something better from Torment. Uh, Phyrexian Ghoul, there's the other sacrifice effect with the tokens-based strategy. Um, and trigging off the die-based strategy. So again, we have the, 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 the Burial card uh, that now can definitely go into multiple different strategies. The Return Phalanx can help with like a blue-black uh, control. The Ruthless Ripper typically is a very aggressive card. We do see Supernatural Strength, but and I guess we could go like Fallen Angel and the Frexian Ghoul for sort of an aggro-based strategy. I don't know, though, if that's going to get there. Uh, this did get downshifted from an uncommon to a common, I do believe, though. I'm not quite sure. I think this was. So Popper Playable, probably. This is actually 
three mana to morph it in death touch one one it's just strictly better than a lot of death touchers like a one one typhoid rat and so with an upside with this it might be pretty decent supernatural stamina is a very good card um again it's going to work with a lot of these die effects here so un until an eternal target creature gets plus two plus zero and when it dies return it to the battlefield tapped so anything that has those die base effects you can get some value off the supernatural stamina we have the twisted abomination which is a, a decent little swamp cycling so they did the cycle of these as well to possibly help with like three color four color five color decks and here's our aggro so we have vampire lacerator and the ruthless ripper and then a will of wisp uh with the return phalanx though is more of this stall based strategy and i'd even yeah i guess we can start to go that base uh aggressive strategy mesmeric fiends vampire lacerators ruthless rippers zoopark park cutthroats can be work, work very well with both tokens and just like a mono black aggro uh, we have active treason which is kind of boring for this type of card there are ones with upsides that i think would would have been just cooler than the active treason we have a browbeat that's fine draws your card unless someone deals five damage so it's good in a burn deck uh, burn is actually quite good in the uh draft format so we have a Chandra, chandra's outrage that works with it um, you can go even higher with cinder storm, but I highly doubt that that's going to be able to be cast. We have the, the mountain cycling cougar, uh, crimson mage that can help everything get haste. We have the Genju of the spires, which turns a, cre a mountain into a six one. It does work really well with an aggressive base strategy. And so it's actually not bad with like crimson mage, but usually it's like, so turn three, you can attack in for six. It feels like another ball lightning. So the red is going to be insanely aggressive. So keep that in mind. The Humble Defector is actually quite fun with a sack outlet. So you can gain control of a, or draw two cards, as it is. And when your the trigger's on the stack for your opponent to gain it, you can sacrifice it. So it's not terrible that way. And if you supernatural stamina, you can get it back, for example. Uh, there will be some cool little uh, car, uh, combos with that. The Ire Shaman with the 2-1 Megamorph, uh, you can play a card. Works really well in your red. I think so far red has the nod over these other colors however like black does seem a little bit complete and white does as well blue seems very lackluster to me so far the pyre hound this is the the, the sort of prowess trigger uh it's a, a four mana for two three that then can get bigger so if you are using a lot of um spells this is a pretty good pickup late the pyroclasm which can keep the the tokens in check skeleton eyes which is a five mana three damage to target creature and then Whenever a creature dealt damage this way uh, dies, you get a 1-1 one, one black skeleton. So it's kind of weird for a, a 5 mana spell. I think it's just over cost. The Skirt Commando, pretty good one. Deals damage to a player. You may have a deal with 2 damage to a player control. So this is actually a, a really good card in this sort of red tempo strategy where you establish the Skirt Commando and then just try to kill everything that comes out. Like kill everything that can block it. But unfortunately though, it just dies to everything. And then, yeah, so... I don't know how I, I feel about this. The Soul Bite Flamekin a lot of times is just too tough to make it work. But I mean, there's the synergy, I guess, with the Cinder Storm. So you go two, four, six. So you have to use it third time to make seven mana. Two, four, six, eight. So, but it only ramps up like two mana for the, the Soul Bite Flamekin. Uh, the Thresher Lizard, it's, it's okay once you have less cards in your hand it works in the burn strategy so it becomes a four it becomes a, a four four and trumpet blast is going to be your go-to card for the white red tokens strategy so this is going to be picked up with the the promise of the burn and burn ray as well as uh the horthing outburst the on cage fury does have some synergy with some of these cards like the pyre hound they can also get in there but it still seems so lackluster with 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 sets of the past a lot of these like like team or battle rage of course here would be just a better uh pick i would assume uh for one mana uh less uh, this one does give plus one plus one uh so does team or battle rage right it just gives plus one plus one and, and double strike and then it gets trample if you control um a creature with power four greater is that what team or battle i can't even remember uh so the audio survivalist so i am happy this was in my top cards i want downshifted so this is now popper playable so it's pretty sweet uh, it's a way to destroy artifacts or enchantments for a pretty low cost, and then you get a 3-2 back. So pretty happy about the Onyx, Onyx Survivalist. We have the Ambassador uh, Oak, which is a 3-3 of Battlefield, creates a 1-1 Elf Warrior. Sure, it's fine. There's another go-wide strategy. So every color has this basically go-wide um, type strategy they can 
uh, utilize, and then black has a lot of the payoffs with it. We have the Arbor Elf that can help ramp. The Did we not get a Birds of Paradise in Masters 25? That is just so crazy. We have the Brood Hatch Nantuko for two mana. Is dealt damage, you create that many 1-1 one, one green insect creature tokens. This is going to be pretty good to enchant like the Ordeal of Heliodon and then be able to just do some damage to it each turn. Uh, again, we did get a pinger, though. I'll have to look and see if we did. If we get down into blue, if we did actually get a pinger. Because that's just, that is just a, a major miss. We have the Colossal Dreadmaw. Okay, we're all sick of that card by now. But it's probably the best in its slot. The 6-6 six, six Trample for 6. Uh, cultivate, cultivate, good little reprint, good little ramp. But what are we really ramping towards? I guess there is some Mythics that are worthwhile. The Echo Encourage, once again, in the Go Wide strategy. The Elvis Apparition for pseudo ramp the ember weaver if you have a red permanent so it's a three three first strike reach so the each one of these colors does seem like it has one that fits in the other so skeleton no skeletonize is the one that fits with black that's sad uh then we have the the three three um yeah it seems like we've had one of each card we then have the epic confrontation really good fight card for sure so that's a pretty good with like brood brood hatch nantuko to get at least like a one one but still it's quite lackluster for, for other cards. It works with Death Touch, too. There will be some good synergies with Epic Convertation. Uh, the Iwamari of the Open Fist, a 5-5 five, five for 4. And it has Trample. When it enters the battlefield, each, each opponent can put a legendary creature card from his battlefield on, or hand on the battlefield. This can really, really, really uh, hurt you if your opponent does have a legendary creature. But usually this is going to be highly something you want to pick up high. It's a 4 mana 5-5. Five, five. And then here's where like the give a creature haste can come into play with it. So green red beats is going to be a a definitely a um, and then it can also go wide. Yeah, green green red seems pretty pretty solid. So oh, Kavu climber enters the battlefield, draw a card, and we have Kavu predator, which is another card on my cards I wanted downshifted. Unfortunately, it did not get the downshift. So it is still an uncommon. This is a card I definitely wanted in Popper. This is going to be able to punish the, the White's life gain strategy. Um, so that's that's kind of cool, I guess. So blue, it seems like green-blue flicker also can work. Or green-white flicker or bant flicker with Ambassador and the Kavu Climber. But again, it's just not as not as synergistic as other Master sets we've seen. Uh, we have the Cross and Colossus, which is 9 mana or 8 mana if you morph it. Ugh. Cross and Tusker, which is a good little ramper. Uh, well, actually, it just puts in your hand. But you get to draw a card and get a land for 3 mana. And then this is a good little reanimation target after that point. But we didn't see a lot of reanimation either. We have Lull that prevents all combat damage and cycling. Plummets every set. We have the Presence of the God, which can then... This has a synergy with the untapped creatures. I didn't see any infinites. Did we see like the the village bell ring or something? We'll 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 head down to other comments. Regrowth, which should return a card. Sure. The stampeding driver, which is once again another go wide strategy. Timber pack wolf, which gets bigger with more wolves. So if is in a draft format, this can actually go pretty crazy. The utopia sprawl can work with arbor colossus to pump up or to to ramp, but I don't know if it's going to get get there. The vessel of nascency does help with the aromancer type strategy with with like residual card advantage, the Wild Heart Invoker, four mana for four three, and then then has so that's just undervalued right there. That's pretty decent. And for eight mana, you can give a creature plus five plus five and trample. And we also have the Wooly Loxodon. The unfortunate thing about this is look at look at green. It just has a bunch too many. <laughs> Excuse me, has way too many cards in the six and seven and eight drop in commons and uncommons. It is going to get too clunked up. Uh, we have the Bailoth Bail Null, which then enters the battlefield, returns two target creature cards from your graveyard hand. Abzan Flicker could really utilize this uh, with the Vessel of Nacency and the Aromancer. So that's that's kind of a cool little uh, synergy there. Blightning will work very well with the Black Red Aggro strategy, and Boros Charm will work very well with the White Red Aggro strategy with the um, added benefit of protecting its Pyroclasm. The Lore Scale Kotal. Uh, is a decent little card every time you draw cards. So, like, blue-green draw could be a thing, because we do have, like, like the Kavu Predator. Uh, however, it's going to take a lot of work. We have the Pillar of the Sleepless, which was a popular card for quite some time, where it gets it, you get to um, 
enchanted creature so pacify creature and then uh have the one damage tax per turn so it's the quicksilver dagger the quicksilver dagger is going to be the little combo with the untapping uh the creature and then dealing, dealing the damage to a player and then drawing a card so that's where the the good old So that one just untaps itself, yeah. The Horseshoe Crab just untaps itself. So there's a combo right there. So you can go Horseshoe Crab or Feed from the Reel with the Quicksilver Dagger. But again, that's going to be a weird payoff. You're going to have to be in blue and red. And I'm not sure that's going to come, that's going to happen that often. The Shadow Mage Infiltrator got downshifted to an uncommon. That's pretty sweet because this is a very good card, Fear. And it will deal as common damage to player you draw a card. Uh, so that's going to give some advantage to going to the blue and black tempo. So you can kind of see where these 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 decks wanted you to be. You wanted to be in like a, a big, go big with the uh, green, black, aggro with the uh, black, red. The white, red's what's going to be like a another aggressive strategy, lower scale. Coddle is going to be tempo with draw. Pillar, uh, black, white is going to have a lot of sacrifice plus aura themes to it so i guess there is a lot more than i i gave credit for it assembly worker target assembly worker is plus so as a common fine it's kind of filler kind of bad is there any other assembly workers you get besides the mishra's uh factory or, or which is the one they reprinted heavy arbalist uh equip creature deals two damage start creature or player and then it's got to equip four so here's another little synergy with the with the uh the horseshoe crab or the feed from the rail we get the Nile Spellbomb, which will help against graveyard-based strategies. Perilous Mirror gets an upshift. Wow, too uncommon. Yay. Which would have... It's a decent little card to splash in anything. The Primal Clay, very boring card. Actually, kind of a bad card. It is either a 3-2, a 2-2, two, two, or a 1-6. Your choice of which which option is pretty terrible. <laughs> so, 2-2 uh, two, two Flyer, a 3-3 three, three Ground Creature, a 1-6 Wall. Woo. Prophetic Prism gets its 90 millionth uh, reprint. This will help with fixing. The Psy of the Shinobi, uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can attach it to it. So it's kind of like a Pirate's Cutlass, a toned down Pirate's cut Cutlass. And here's the other Assembly Worker type strategy. I think you'd have to go like a green artifact ramp to really make it worthwhile. Because in Self-Assembler can go get more Assembly Workers. But I highly, highly uh, question if this is going to be able to uh, <laughs> be a deck. But, you know, people might be able to pick these up so late because they're both commons and then build an assembly worker deck. <laughs> it just seems so bad. Swiftfoot Boots, two mana, Hexproof Haste. That's going to be a nice little addition. Yeah, this is going to be a, a, something you'll pick up highly because Haste haste with one and Hexproof is going to basically make all of your creatures that much uh, better. We have the Treasure Keeper, which is not downshifted though. So it's four mana for three, three. I like this card a lot. When it dies, you basically Cascade. It, until you ha hit a convert mana cost three or less, and then um, you can cast that card and then put all the other ones on the bottom. The Haunted Fenugreek is good about getting a creature back. The Mirrored Landscape is definitely a card that needs reprinted for Commander, and it's pretty decent to also uh, kind of ramp up. So you're, you're costing this coming to play tapped, and then your third turn usually by paying two and tapping to go get two lands of the same type. Uh, keep that in mind, though. You have to get two basic lands cards that share a land type. We have the Quicksand, sure. We have the Zotaic Cavern, sure. We have the Enthralling Victor, not downshifted though, and there's a battlefield that can control target creatures with power two or less. Uh, in a in the sacrifice-based red-black sacrifice, this is going to be able to grab something and then sack it to one of your sack outlets, which is pretty decent. We have the Unearth, which definitely did need a reprint in uh, Popper, and the Jackal Pup, uh, which is a 2-1, so it goes in the aggressive strategy, and whenever stealth damage deals that much damage to you, um unearth is gonna be quite quite good this definitely needed a reprint in popper street wraith uh upshifted though that's the problem a lot of this set a lot of the value uh from was in commons got upshifted to uncommon we also have rancor that is typically a common a lot of sets upshifted into an uncommon we have the ravenous chupacabra we have the dirge of the dread all creatures gain fear which can help a go wide strategy or it has cycling to have tart creature gain fear all right, now we've seen all of these, so let's just try to wrap it up where we're going. So red-black aggro does seem like a thing. Red-black sacrifice also can, and then splashing in a few other cards like the the white can definitely be a thing. We have... Uh, Ghost Ship is, is kind of okay, <laughs> kind of weird. But let's just look at more of the common strategy. So blue-black spells, 
does seem like a thing. Uh, we have Kindle for more of the burn routes. We have a lot of burn routes. So now that we've seen the spoilers, let's just let's just uh, let's just go by colors. So white, white. You can't really rely. It has a life gain. It has a flicker based strategy. You get some of these rares. You're in good shape. The promise of the boon ray is very splashable with multiple colors. It does have that synergy with like the Aramancer. Oh, they haven't they haven't updated this, but these are the cards we've we've uh, yeah we we saw the rest of them. Um, There is some little synergy with like Darien King of, of of not really with the Darien King of Keldor. Uh, Core Firewalker can stop red in his tracks, so it seems like white white is pretty good at stopping the red strategy. And it does, I guess, it does have Savannah lines to be a little bit aggressive. So blue blue has blue just seems very. It does have the tempo strategy that the Mana War has some tricks. But I think blue is more of the support color in this. You really re need to rely on your other color to make blue work. There's not a lot of reasons, in my opinion, to to go blue as your primary color. It's gonna be it's gonna be the the support color. Uh, black again, we have the the kind of aggressive strategy with it. With um... yeah, with some decent little removal like the murders. Uh, to to help it help it buy red though just looks straightforward burn we got burn got a lot of burn uh, cards with ball lightning kindle uh, lightning bolt uh, we have Chandra's outrage things like that green it can go either go wide or stomp uh, you can stomp kind of kind of stomp with the nettle sentinel uh, as your one drop you have a few so even like white green can go aggressive as well. So these do pair pretty well with other color combinations. I do tend to think it's gonna be hard to go three colors with this type of uh, strategy. And yeah, just not a lot of, there's a lot of just awkward, weird cards that I just don't think work very well in this in this type of, of set. So anyway, I'm gonna pull up the, 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 the current set value of this. Um, I believe that the, the pack EV is around $7.15 is when I last saw it. So let's see if, if Goldfish is updated the whole set value of Masters 25. Uh, they still have 106 cards and it's sitting at a, but that was yesterday. I'll show you where we're, we're sitting here. So it's sitting at $830. And we do have some like uncommons and like Street Wraith and Nettle Sentinel that will, will add the value to this. So there's two ways to look at the set values. We have total set value, which just takes every card and adds it up. And then we have Pack EV. If I can find that again, I found a source that was looking at it. I wonder if it's been updated. And the Pack EV last night was seven dollars and sixteen cents. So that was 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 definitely going to go down because it was only taking into consideration the cards that we already had. And so they already spoiled like some good commons and uncommons that were counting as the only common slots. Because how you do Pack EV is you add up all the commons and then they have a value towards the pack, and then you divide that by uh, what 10 because there's 10 commons in a pack and then you have the uncommons and there's three so you you, you take the entire value of all the commons and then you you divide it by uh, you get three per pack so you get three per pack of that value and then you uh, take all the values of the rares and mythics together and mythics are worth one fourth of their price I believe because they're one fourth the rarity of a rare uh, or there, there, there's, there's four rares per every mythic. And then you take the rares and divide it by, uh, you just take the average of all the rares together. And that gives you the pack EV. And so the mythics actually, so like Jace, the mind sculptor, you divide this by four to compare it to a rare to see how much it's, it's actually giving the value. Uh, Imperial recruiter is actually holding the brunt of the rare slot value with Rashad and port, but these are in a free fall, both of these right now. The Chalice and the Incendiary Bridge are the Mythics, so they're not adding too much to the value, as well as the Vandalign Click. The problem with these, these rare lands is they are all in massive freefalls at the moment. So they are going down, down, down. You can see people are starting to pre-sell them on TCG Player for 21, 22. And I think that the, the value of these are going to be between $10 and $15 when the, the dust settles. They might actually even go down even a bit more. Like maybe between the $8 to $12 mark is what all we're going to get from these lands, which is not that great of, of a master set for a cycle of lands. If you could 
really compare to modern masters 2017 the the set value the pack value a lot of it had to do with fetch lands the fetch lands uh, had a lot of value injected in blood moon is is typically it's like going up at the moment however blood moon just got a lot of uh, reprintings in a row as uh in a vocation it's been an eighth ninth chronicles uh modern masters three and modern masters so let's just check it modern masters three and see where it was going it started to have that trajectory up uh, it bottomed out after this reprinting to about 19 bucks, recovered to 24. So I think we're going to see it go back down to 19, which is where it's at, and then probably go down to 14, I would say, when it settles. But Blood Moon is going to be one of the cards that actually helps retain the value of the set. Uh, we have, look at Phyrexian Obliterator, just hemorrhaging value like crazy. It did get up all the way up to 36 right there before it was reprinted. The problem with this, New Phyrexia was one of those fickle sets. New Phyrexia changed the rules of magic. Um, when After New Phyrexia, this is the last set that actually sold out when it was still in standard. You couldn't even find packs of New Phyrexia. And so Wizards changed their policy with Return to Ravnica to what's called print to demand. What they used to do with standard sets is they just did one print run and then they, they, they tested the waters and they did a second print run to try to guess how much supply they're going to go through. Now, the whole thing about New Phyrexia, it was kind of an okay set when it was paired with um, Zendikar. But then when Innistrad, especially when Dark Ascension and Avacyn Restored came out, New Phyrexia was the premier set with that block. And most of the cards you needed for standard were included in New Phyrexia. And so it sold off the shelves. And I, just, I remember still in standard that New Phyrexia was five bucks a pack. While people are still, I mean, Avacyn Restored was just barely released and people were needing new Phyrexia. And so it was hard to find from distributors. It was hard to find at eBay. It was hard to find at local game stores for a reasonable price. And so that that kind of uh, changed magic into what we call like magic 3.0, where Return to Ravnica was just printed to oblivion. You can still find boxes of Return to Ravnica for 75 bucks. Uh, then the same is true for Theros block. The same is true for, for Khan's block. Um, besides the whole pump and dump Rudy scam, uh, with the constant arc here, uh, you could still find constant arc here for very, very cheap at this point. It's still only about 115, 110. Um, and those, I, those, I guarantee those lands are on the horizon. I don't know if wizards, this is a weird sign with masters 25, because as you saw, there just isn't a lot of value in masters 25 right now. This is actually looking very dud. Uh, again, this isn't going to go up very significantly when the rest of these cards are are increased. Uh, I don't know how much like Street Wraith and Unearth and and those type of Utopia Sprawl are going to be able to add uh, to this this list. But if we compare it to where a lot of other sets started off, um, let's just pull them all up. So Iconic Eternal, Modern, we're not going to look at 20, we'll look at 2017, it's more relevant, because the, the first Master set was not. So Iconic Masters uh, had a set EV about 1,028 when it finally, the dust settled. And that one collapsed pretty quickly. And I don't think that that uh, Masters 25 has any sort of inoculation from this massive crash. We compared the two sets, the cards are very, very similar here. Yes, you see some very low prices, 60, 30, 30, 30 compared to 136, 60, 59, 57. So those are quite substantially higher, but let's look at 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th. 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 22, 18, 17, 14, 14, 13. Uh, we have 35, 27, 25, 20, 19, 19. So still about $5 uh, closer. Let's go down to about 20 down and see where we're at. Yeah, that's where it starts to get down. But this is, this is the release. If we come back here, and look at where some of these were at release, like the Grove of the Burn Willows, it released at 34. So the 34 is quite similar to the Ensnaring Bridge. Um, Ensnaring Bridge, though, is a mythic. It will hold its value a little bit better. Uh, but, I mean, that was a, a rare. Let's look at Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize on release was $30. And we can kind of say it was like 25 So, and that actually, Thoughtseize has a lot more playability in Modern than any of these cards. Uh, it's seeing way more play than anything here. So... Thoughtsies compared to a rare like Azusa, uh, Azusa is probably going to go down quite a bit. Uh, or if we even compare like Summoner's Pack, this is probably the one that gets killed because this this is a card that does see some heavy play in Modern though, in Titan Shift and whatnot. But it has a lot less implication than something like even Thoughtsies, even though Thoughtsies has a lot more supply out there. Um, value has already been murdered in value. 
but we see some of these mythics are going to be having a very, very tough time to hold their value, like the Chroma uh, Angel of Wrath. Yeah, it didn't have a lot. Legions, time shifted, a dual deck anthology. It's printing was 650. It's going for nine. That's already overinflated. See right here is, is something that it has to go back down to this $4 mark. It has to. There's no no way around it. And this was already on a free fall. Look how badly this 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 card has been falling. And now it's got a reprint. It's going to half the value. This could be a $2 mythic is what a Chrome Angel of Wrath is going to, to uh, settle down. So even, but then here's the, the real telling thing. Mana Drain started off at 160. And so that's very comparable to Jace, even though I think Jace is definitely something that's going to hold his value a little bit better. I do think we'll have Jace go back down to about the $100 mark is, is where we're going to see it. But this is even overinflated at 135 uh, compared to Eternal Masters. I guess it's right at Eternal Masters 135 as well. But that recently had a, a spike. We don't know how well Jace... Jace could be just like a crazy expensive card though because it is seeing a ton of play in Modern. Okay, so we have Eternal Masters. Eternal Masters started out the gates at... 1,000 again, so going to be a little bit higher. This Eternal Masters ended up being kind of a dud of a set too. It got a little bit of a bump here because of Jace the Mind Sculptor going up, and Mana Crypt has a, a lot more, um, and Force of Will has a lot more playable than a lot of the cards that are being spoiled out of this set. It almost seems like, yeah, Eternal Masters, Jace is a wash because they both have it. This seems way more Masters 25 to me than the current Masters 25. All right. So we have 130, we have 135, 90, 80, 41, 35, 26. So this set is going to be, uh, have a lot more value in it than the, um, eternal or, or masters 25 modern masters two. Karn liberated, Tarmogoyf, Mox Opal, Noble Hierarch, Dark Confident, Emerald Cool, Kozlik, Bitter Blossom, Cryptic Man of Slam Dunk better set than the, uh, masters 25. This poor thing started off about that set value about 900 and then crashed pretty hard. The, the amount of these is much less than the amount of printing of the master sets after this. And then we have last but not least the masters 25, which I believe started off at 13. No, it got up to, got up to about 900 as well, but this one is able to retain its value because it was full of, of really good all-stars like Liliana, Snapcasters, Tarmogoyf, Scalding Tarn, Caverns, for Catacombs, uh, if you have no blood moons a wash here you had a lot of these cards that that and just look at some of these cards that are staples in the format that just got completely crushed um crushed in value down here so unfortunately i just don't think that masters uh 25 really has anything going for it at all it's it's pretty much pretty much going to be a bust of a set in my opinion the draft format doesn't look very good a lot of these cards can't hold value and that's it is what it is anyway though if a little bit of shameful self-promotion again come pick up a box if you don't want a box 180 uh from rogue deck builder all the proceeds go to a good cause keeping us afloat uh in this kind of uh post-sponsorship world anyway this has been kevin with roguedeckbuilder.com thanks for watching